Welcome to Wilton Mill in Northamptonshire for round one of the Ultimate Karting Championship in 2022. It's a new year and a new race season, and if the action from 2021 is anything to go by, excitement is guaranteed. Here we go, into the left, the ankle, up towards the toe, through the right, Quaker sliding. This could be the chance for Hayward alongside, and as they go into the heel, he's got him. Beautiful move from Dalton Hayward. That could not have been timed better. It's amazing race battles. Mitchell is in there as well. This is 25th all the way down to 30th. Look at the scrabble as drivers are trying to find every little piece of tarmac they can, and two or three of them coming a cropper, not able to keep it on the racetrack for long. Gilbert, though, on the inside, gets back into third place. Oh, and off goes Holbrook. Holbrook on the grass. And there goes Lingard. There goes Casey. Bit of a run wide. That's Mitt Spearing. Mitt Spearing goes wide. Oh, that's, oh, that's dropped him to fifth, maybe to sixth. I think he's going to go back to seventh, eighth by the time he gets out of Christmas. Oh. What a shame for Mitt Spearing. Out of the toe. Last chance, Rocco. And it's going to be tight as Wolf recovers to protect, but they're going to get a slick shot at the outside, side by side to the line. Oh my goodness, Wolf just, just holds it. On oh, a spin, that's Gregory. Gregory goes around. So unfortunately for Henry Gregory, he's now going to fight his way from the back. But they're all black off. There goes the leader, Sam Shaw, straight off the road, straight across the toe of the boot, trying to rejoin in front of the leaders. Still for the lead alongside Cordell, they bang wheels and still gets their Cordell on the grass. Still runs it round the outside. Shaw gets past the boat to take over the lead. Oh my goodness, the lead changes twice in about 18 feet. And now Stilp's done it again. He takes the lead back again into the last lap. The back of the car is stepping out sideways. He goes up on the grass, so does Sam Shaw. They've both gone. And now Cordell gets through in a second, Carr gets through in a third. And that surely has the win nailed for Gabriel Still. Slicks in the rain, you gotta love it. Chasing after the 66, that is Taylor Orridge. And he's got on the inside of Turnbull. Turnbull trying to get back in. Oh, we've got on the inside of us, that's Lloyd. Oh, and we've got off. Cameron Brett Thompson goes through. Wesley Swain going through. Cunningham's going to try and line up on the inside. He can't get there. He squeezed. George Robertson gets onto the inside line. And that's opened the floodgates. Bishop hangs on to the lead. Spanswick now launches on the inside. That's what Bishop wanted. That's what he wanted. And look at that. You've got the man behind him. Hobson's all over him, putting him under extreme pressure. And now all of a sudden, Hobson is not in the equation. He's gone from second down to fifth place. Thorpey on the Litchfield cart, but he's still fighting. Oh, we've gone off. That's Kalai Atkins tangling there with Teddy Pritchard Williams. This is where it's all going to get settled. A long way round the outside comes Morgan Moore to the inside of Wolf. Wolf drips wide on the grass. Drummond and Edgar on the inside. They've got them. Drummond and Edgar are through into first and second. They're going to take it all. Werrell's going to be third just at the line. Zach Drummond and George Edgar have snatched it all away. Just some of the action from 2021 there. And with 283 drivers signed up for this, the opening round in 2022, spread across just five classes, the grids are going to be full of young talent, all battling out for some of the biggest trophies and best prizes that the sport has to offer, including an experience day with the YRDA, who excel in nurturing young talent on their journey, all the way from karting, hopefully up to F1. And earlier on, I caught up with Simon Stone from the YRDA to ask him exactly how they help these drivers on their journey to the top. So the YRDA is the Young Racing Drivers Academy and it's been founded off the back of Arden Motorsport, which was founded by Christian Horner and his father, Gary. And we aim to take your average young racing driver from all levels across the UK and now we're expanding into Europe and overseas and take them up through the Arden team from karting into Formula 4, Formula 3 and hopefully to push them towards the likes of Formula 1 like we've achieved with Oscar Piastri. Great to welcome Paul and the UKC team down to Arden Motorsport with a select uh, couple of the champions from the season and we had a great day going over the performance aspects of the programme and giving them some time on our simulator. It was great to see you know, the young talent coming through the Ultimate Karting Championship and we're looking forward to working with them in the coming year. So Arden's the overriding team that we sit under. They're the team that all of the academy drivers aspire to be a part of and drive for. 
and it's fantastic to see a young driver come in so young and one day step behind the wheel of one of our Red Arrows. Yeah, the YRDA, they're really good and really professional uh, academy. Uh, they help us all with the social media management, uh, which is very important because it helps gain sponsors. Um, they're very good with that side of things as well, helping drivers gain sponsorship. They lead you in many different directions. You know, some may go to Formula Regional, Formula 3, you know, um, in the single-seater side of things. So to start with, we put them in our simulator, so we gave them a good chunk of time doing some laps around Silverstone and pushing themselves to the limits and seeing what their on-track capabilities are in a Formula 4 car, and the simulator is a great representation of that. Look to the white board, brake, down two. Off the brake, that's good on the brake, Sky, really good. Roll, we're going to gradually get quicker, but at the moment, feel for the car, flat. And then from there, we took them up to the boardroom and we did a media session and a performance session. So we split them off into two groups and we started off talking about the importance of fitness and mindset of in motorsport and then we talked about brand image and marketing for the young drivers. They're really good, they help with all the fitness plans, the diet plans, which is really important as a driver as you may well know. Um, and yeah, the, the simulator work that they do for us as well is really good. I work on ensuring that the image that the public sees of the drivers as their presence grows is maintained to the highest standards and we offer packages where we work directly one-to-one -one with the drivers for exclusive content and stuff like that and that's fantastic because it really allows us to get behind the driver's eye and put them in the forefront of our image. The program is completely bespoke. Typically drivers will come along for simulator sessions twice a month and that's working with our specialist driver coaches which includes Steve Hutchinson and former British GT champion Tom Canning and we work with the drivers on their driving skills in-house at Arden. And from a remote perspective, they work with me and our performance directors, Chris Ray, and we work on ensuring that their fitness is 100% and their brand is there as well. I think the, uh, the gear changes on the simulator kind of help, you know, having an understanding for the shifter cart. So being part of the YDA has really helped me. Some of us go on to become racing drivers and some of us go on to, like myself, work with media. But the Academy provides such a great foundation for that. We take your car in drivers and we open up as many doors as possible. And we're really looking forward to investing a lot of time into the Young Car in Academies again. If they head along to one of our social pages or our website, they can contact us and send over their driver's CV. And you know, we're open to all ideas. So any drivers who are interested, drop us an email with your driver's CV and we'll review. If we think you're a applicant that we'd be interested in, we'll invite you along for an info informal interview and simulator session and from there if we think that you're the perfect fit for the program we'll step forward and we'll approach you and offer you a drive within the program. Wheel to Mill is one of the most popular karting circuits in the UK with huge numbers attending every club event that they hold here. In fact some weekends it's so popular that the club entries do reach the maximum and drivers find themselves being turned away. So let's take a look at the circuit they all love with your race commentator, Alan Taddei. Not only one of the most popular karting circuits in the UK, now one with some of the best facilities, the new clubhouse picked out, the red building on the left as we go through the start line. The first left-hander is Oblivion, the right-hander there is Crook, run wide on the exit, fine lady is this little kink here, we're on Manuel's bank now, up to Christmas corner, big overtaking opportunity as Max Cuthbert shows you absolutely how to do it. The left-hand king brings us down to Incomers here, the right-hander, that's an overtaking opportunity if you get the run, as is Ashby, this right-hander, run wide on the exit, over the concrete, maximising your exit speed into the left-hander here at Parker. That brings you down to this very short squirt into Chapman's, another great overtaking opportunity. The right king brings us onto the inside straight, down to the boot, the first part of the boot is the ankle, the left-hander, and then it's into the toe, and gain overtaking opportunities if you get the right run out of the toe. And the final turn, of course, is the heel. That brings us back to the finish line, and that's a lap of the track here at Wilton Mill. It's one of the toughest race circuits in the country, and what a place to start the Ultimate Karting Championship. Let's go into the senior road tax grid. It's very competitive in the top 10. Jamie Rogers for KR Sport, alongside Lorenzo Cordell, who has stepped up to senior Rotax, and is doing an amazing job already. Sam Hawthorne and Sam Gornall will share the second row. Louis Harvey for Argenti Motorsport, alongside Stephen Napier. Then Ethan Ling, the highly rated privateer, alongside Jamie Perrily for Project One. His teammate, Brian Willis, will be P9. 
And the number nine seed, Chris Miller, the highly rated privateer, rounding out the top 10. On row six, it's Louis Weaver and Magic Amera for KR Sport, Reese Duffy of Saltire and Lucas Ellingham of Jack Dex Racing. Jensen Watson, Tommy Edmonds from Oscar Hull and Jordan Morris. Kian Tassang will line up alongside Brandon Klein Nagelvoort, who's already had his back to the wall for a lot of the weekend. There's a few drivers outside the top 20 to keep an eye on here as well, as there are a few starting out of position. Most notably, Caden McQueen and Teddy Pritchard Williams. They are outside the top 20. They'll want to charge their way through. So too will Tristan Rennie and Oliver Meadows for Argenti Motorsport. Bringing up the back of the grid, it's Doughty, Moody, Smith and Baker. After the break, we'll race. Welcome back to Wilton Mill for the Formula Fans Ultimate Karting Championship 2022 kickoff. And this is the senior Rotax final. Jamie Rogers on the pole, Lorenzo Cordell alongside. And as they go along the tram lines on the straight, we are going to go racing up to the first corner into Crook and through Oblivion. We ride on board with Caden McQueen, who's got a lot of homework to do here to charge his way back through the field. He's already dueling away there with Casper Scusa, and that is the 88 of Cameron Crockett. He goes the long way round, and he's also going to take on Jamie Mead on the DSM Alonso chassis. How about that? A few places made up already. And to the right, it's a little bit of a moment for Tristan Rennie. He's going to lose some ground. We tuck our way through Ashby, and we are just finding place after place after place McQueen is carving his way through the field Caden McQueen what a start from 26 on the grid he's already made up what that's got to be at least 10 places so he's up to into the top 16 yeah he's had a very tricky weekend up to this point so far he's had a couple of race wins taken off him for various different uh, problems one was a front fairing and the other one was uh, a bit of a technical infringement so all kinds of problems Look how greasy it is still as they come off the heel of the boot onto the main straight. You can see a big tank slapper coming in there from Ethan Ling as he went up to Christmas. We're back on board with Caden. That is Thomas Wood to our right, and we are boxed in. There's not a lot we can do as we close up on Kier Sang, and off goes Wood. That is a big moment for him. Here comes Reese Duffy to the inside line into Ashby, but Caden McQueen isn't going to give him a lot of space, but he has to in the end as Teddy Pritchard Williams squeezes back through. That's very rare to see Caden McQueen losing places at Wilton Mill. He normally charges his way through, and this is going to be a tricky one as Duffy loses ground again. And it's going to be like this all the way through this race. The circuit is still very tricky to find grip. Ethan Ling with the fastest lap last time round. Caden McQueen lost two and then made one back, and Pritchard Williams went through on Reese Duffy as well. Oh, look, there's still a big amount of water there on the far side of the course. There's been rain. Uh, a little bit lackadaisical all the way through the race day here and there's still patches of water at various points of the course while they're all on slicks McQueen dives on the inside at Christmas a nice move on the inside of Tommy Edmonds and the 11 of Alexander Baker a lot of the action in the midfield in this early phase of the race but it's these two out front Sam Hawthorne leads the way Ethan Ling in second position Pritchard Williams and McQueen they bang wheels and Pritchard Williams has to go wide that was a bit cheeky from Caden McQueen but he does not do anything other than pure ruthless efficiency as he goes through the field. Here we are, Hawthorne versus Ling, and look at the gap they've already made up on Sam Gornall, who's in P3. Then Cordell, Rogers, Napier, Perley, Willis, Harvey, and Weaver. And this is going to be Ethan Ling's opportunity into Christmas. Does he go for it? No, he's going to hang back, wait for his opportunity. It's still very early doors to go ugly on the inside line. And it's always more preferable to be the man in second position at this stage of the race, letting the leader do all the hard work. Yeah, and these two don't need to do anything silly. They've got this race tied up one and two, basically. If they just keep working together like this, they will finish one and two. Not sure what order they'll be in at the end, but uh, all they need to do is just follow each other round for the rest of the race until there's maybe two or three laps to go. Then they can start battling. They don't want to do anything silly at this stage. Sam Gornall, P3, doing a very consistent job all the way through the weekend. He's actually got himself a little bit of breathing space now over Cordell, Willis and Ellingham. Lucas Ellingham charging his way through the field. It's great to see him making some progress. And I think we've had a spin. I think Brandon klein Nagelbort has had a moment elsewhere on the circuit. He's suddenly plummeted his way down the order. There's Chrissy Miller in front of us. We're back on board with Caden McQueen. As he skates his way out of Inkermans, up towards Ashby. A dive up the inside. You can see how muddy it is still offline. Our camera is absolutely splattered. Jamie Rogers with the fastest lap last time round. So Rogers is on the move. 
Sam Dorner is on the move as well, Jake. He's got space behind, so he can concentrate on the two in front, and that gives him a significant advantage. He can judge his braking on what they are doing, and look at that. He is definitely getting closer, Sam Dorner. So this is now Ethan Ling trying to put pressure on Sam Hawthorne. A long, fine lady up Manuel's bank. A little bit of an adjustment there for Sam Hawthorne as he moves to cover the... Uh, a little bit there they've got a little bit of tape that they can use to cool the engine down or heat it up depending on what they need and that little dash on the steering wheel can give them an indication as to how hot the water is what they need to adjust so they will obviously monitor that all the way through the field it's not just a case of put your foot down and turn the wheel you've got to be an absolute scientist at the wheel and Sam Gornall is chipping away wow Sam Gornall has just closed about 10 meters in one lap he is right on them now so it's uh, Hawthorne from Ling and Gornall, but for how long? Yeah, I have a feeling Gornall's going to go for it into Crook. That's going to be brave. He's made it happen. That is so brave from Sam Gornall. You don't know how much grip you're going to play with there as McQueen dives up the inside and makes another move. That is on Chris Miller. So he gets the overtaking move there. And it's the Project One pair making their way battling through the field. That's Ryan Willis and Jamie Perrily as Jensen Watts clocks 45-6 for the lap. That does prove that the circuit is getting quicker all the time. There are still damp patches around the course. You can see that on the inside line on the run to uh, what used to be known as Parker and Chapman is now known as Wilkins and Ozziers. Oh, is this going to be the lead from Gornall? How has he done that in one lap? Sam Gornall goes from third to first in less than a lap. That was so impressive from Sam Gornall. Fastest man on the track is Jensen Watts. He's down in 14th place. But he is the fastest man out there at Not the anymore. Caden McQueen's just banged in a 45-3. So he is cutting his way through. Lucas Ellingham has got himself over to fourth position by the look of it past Lorenzo Cordell. There's McQueen, tucked right up behind Oscar Hull. Great battles in the midfield as well. This is the run for 14th position and there's several class acts in the field. Oh, two carts up the road together. That is Miller and Edmonds, so they both drift off the road. Miller gets back on behind Oliver Meadows. So Meadows is chasing after Tristan Rennie. So they manage to get back in, and Alex Baker's gonna pick him off, as is Machi Camara by the look of it. Here goes Cordell on the inside of Louis Harvey. Thanks very much, mate, into the heel of the boot, and on to the next lap he goes. Three minutes 40 on the clock. Still plenty of race action to come. I have a feeling that we are not done yet with Sam Goddard in the lead. There goes Lucas Ellingham up to the inside line in the second place. And the door is left wide open for Ryan Willis to step up the inside as well. Ethan Ling's going to get out wide and he loses about three places. Poor Ethan Ling completely hung out to dry. And Caden McQueen storms in. He's going to go right around the outside of him. I think Ethan Ling's got a problem. Yeah, Ethan Ling must have a mechanical issue there. Not often they have any oh, problems with the engines, that, that but he must have an issue. That was contact, I think, as... Uh, who was that trying to come through? Was that Jamie Rogers in the 59? I think he missed his braking point by half a metre and he just slewed into the back of another cart there. They've managed to get out of Dodge, but now we've got Sam Hawthorne, who was leading, struggling to hold up his teammate Harvey. Harvey on the inside. Lovely job. So it's uh, Sam Gornall out in front, then it's Lucas Ellingham, Willis. Rogers, and now in fifth is number five, Louis Harvey. He gets on the inside of Jamie Perrily. And then it is Hawthorne and the 20 of Lorenzo Cordell with Caden McQueen on the rampage. Black flag for the 99, I'm afraid. So that is game over for Alex Moody. He is going to have to come into the pits to retire as McQueen cuts in around the outside of Jamie Perrily. Now he's going to go for Hawthorne. Oh, my word. He's just picking them off one by one like raisins. Hawthorne, a big tag slapper. Well, Sam Hawthorne's had a great race in the early stages of this, but he's going backwards now, unfortunately. But he's got to take the positives out of the weekend. And at this stage, Jake, you've got to get the best result you can. You can't allow the red mist to descend and think, well, I should have been winning this. He's got to get the best result he can. He's got good points in the back from the pre-final. He's got to get the best result he can now from this race. Teddy Pritchard Williams able to make up places. And there is Jensen Watts, who was setting fastest laps at one point in the race. He's trying to close ground again on Sam Hawthorne to get his way through as they go into Ashby's. And I do believe that there are some spots of rain. Yes, it is starting to rain a little bit again. You can see it on the camera lens as McQueen charges in on the inside of Cordell. Pritchard Williams goes for it as well. They bang wheels, and that looks like Jamie Perrily taking to the grass. You can see for yourself just how treacherous the conditions are in the closing stages as a light sprinkling of rain is going to cause all sorts of issues. Hawthorne's going to try and come back at once. Spots on the camera. You can tell a red flag, red flag. We've had an incident out on track. Red flags 
So the race is going to come to a stop. There it is. There's a cart that's ended up Smat in the barriers. Match it, Camara, I think, Jake. On the left hand side there as we went fast. So red flag means the race is stopped. The carts will come to a stop and then we will see what will happen. Now, looking at the time, I think the clerk of the course will call this yeah, a result. It's going to be declared, isn't it? I think it will. Because there's we'll only see. A, there's not even two minutes of racing left on the timer, so I've got a feeling that that red flag means we are going to have completed enough race distance that it is not going to be uh, restartable. There is Magic Amera. He's obviously in some discomfort. Fortunately, the marshals were there very quickly, so it is a declared result, and the race win goes to Sam Gornall in front of Lucas Ellingham and Ryan Willis. Louis Harvey is going to get fourth position. Teddy Pritchard-Williams in P5. Jamie Rogers in sixth from Cordell, Watts, Sam Hawthorne and Oscar Hull. And if that race had continued, we just haven't got a clue how far through the ranks Caden McQueen could have come. He was absolutely on it. But fortunately, even though Magic Amera is in some discomfort, he is in essence okay. So that is the main thing. Sam Gornall victorious in the first Senior Rotax final of the year. Ryan, your first experience here at uh, the Ultimate Carnage Championship. How have you enjoyed it? Uh, I've enjoyed it very well. Uh, quite a decent start to the weekend and pretty well. Yeah, 68 entries in Senior Rotax. So it's a big grid to come third. That's a great start to the championship and it's all about points, isn't it? Just talk us through your weekend. Uh, in the first one, it was quite good. We got first. The next two were quite bumpy. We got in a couple of collisions, but except for that, it was quite a good weekend. Okay, well done. Who do you want to thank for your weekend? I want to thank my dad, uh, Project One Racing, Dean Waters, and the whole team. Okay, well done. Thank you. Lucas, you're an old hand at this, but uh, you're in X30, Rotax this weekend. Just talk us through some of the differences that you found. Yeah, I found X30's got more top ends, which is better for the overtakes into tight corners, faster entry speeds, so you've got to press the brake harder to get the move done. Also, in the mid-range, the Rotax got a lot more out the corners, so better for cutting pe undercutting people and getting a better drive off the corner. OK, and this weekend, great start to the championship, obviously. You're an old hand, you know it's all about points. So second yeah. in a huge grid, 68 drivers, it's pretty big. What were you expecting coming in through the weekend? What were you hoping for? Oh, it, was, it was really tough this weekend. I was really hoping to come, come away with a win, but unfortunately red flag stopped me from getting there to challenge for that. But yeah, it went all right. Really tough this morning when I broke down, so I ended up having to start 14th in the pre-final, pre made my way through to second in that which was good points for the start in, in the final. OK, great result really for you. Who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank Jack Dex Racing, Simon Stoneham for the help off the track, um, Time Racing Engines for all their help with the motor, my dad for spending all the money on this. We had a good start getting into fourth and then getting into third at the end of the lap and then caught the two leaders, passed them and then just drove off and then the race was red flagged and it just ended there. Yeah, kind of, I think it's the first weekend at the Ultimate Carling Championship for Coles Racing, so great result for them as well. Who do you want to thank for your weekend? Well, I just want to thank my mum, my dad. I want to thank um, Pearson Bullet Carter's family for helping me this weekend because my dad's away in America. And I also want to thank my mechanic, Alex, Coles, and my two sponsors, Pete Marquis and Oaks Koi Farm. OK, well done. Cheers. Great racing from the competitors in Senior Rotax. Points are accumulated not just in the final, but over the course of the entire weekend as well. So even though Sam Gornall wins the final, he's actually dead level on points with Jamie Rogers for KR Sport. Four points further back is Lorenzo Cordell. Another four is Sam Hawthorne. Then Louis Harvey, Ryan Willis, Stephen Napier, Lucas Ellingham, Jamie Perrelly and Jensen Watts are in the top 10, with Caden McQueen scratching his head in the hope he can get back into the top 10 next time out. Join us after the break when we're back with more racing. It's the Sony Kart Academy Super Final for drivers from eight years of age. The Ultimate Karting Championship features five of the most popular classes in karting in 2022, and we'll be covering all of the finals at each of the rounds. Now, these karts use the Rotax Micromax engine, which was new to the UK in 2021, but has been firmly established in Europe for many years. 
And earlier on, I caught up with some of the parents and asked them why this was the class that was perfect for their youngsters. In the Sony Academy for me last year, watching through all of the racing was just so close. All the, you know, the racing was, was very close. This year, the reason we've come back is we want to give it another go. Um, I like the fact that it's pulled engines. We're all on the same chassis, which makes it very fair. Um, this year, we've got a lot more teams coming in, which you know, opens up the driver ability. And uh, hopefully, this year should be as strong as last year. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. We decided to come over to the UKC um, Sodi class because it's all pulled engines. So it basically goes off, you know, your driver, driver skills. Rung Mark um, just tried to find out a bit more about the championship. Very helpful, very friendly. Mark, he's a lovely person and, uh, you know, I think it, what he's trying to do, promoting fair racing, you know, in the UK is great. And uh, I think he's doing a fantastic job. Also Bradley as well. So, yeah, we're, it's good. We're going OK. We are having a few problems um, this weekend, but you can't, you can't have everything going your way, I suppose. So a bad Saturday yesterday should turn into an extremely good Sunday. So fingers crossed today we can have a better result. He's adapted very quickly with the Saudi car. As soon as he got in it, absolutely fantastic. He seems to suit him. We had a very, very good test day Friday. Yesterday, a little bit mixed. Two practices, brilliant, but then went into heat one, made a few silly mistakes. Heat two did really well, incredible, um, got into sixth, sixth place. Coles have been absolutely fantastic with him. Uh, the driver coaching, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The support, the show as well. Um, he's only been with them two weekends now, um, and the improvement we've seen is fantastic. The Saudi class has got 18. Um, so far, and I think I think there is a couple more going to be coming. Um, and he's, he's up. He is. He's only just turned nine, um, so he is up against sort of 10, 11 year olds who you know have got a lot of experience on him. I started racing uh, when I was eight years old in uh, cadets, and I moved up to junior road tax, went through to senior road tax. We come out of karting and went into cars, single seaters, uh, went on to a few prototype races, Clio's, and. Yeah, so it's having an understanding to help Jack is, uh, is, is quite important. Jack's my member, she, she done the Formula Woman Academy, so there was 1,500 uh, females in the UK, and she managed to finish third um, and done a full season in the Formula Woman in a Caterham 7. So she loves it just as much as I do, but you know, my little girl as well, she, she does a bit of karting to, he to help Jack out. And as a family of four, this is our passion, we love it. Family weekends, well, his biggest supporter, his pappy, couldn't come this weekend. Um, but there's myself, uh, his dad and two sisters. And then I think a couple of friends are going to be coming as well today. And the, the atmosphere is great, family run, and we really enjoy it. Time to hit the reset button there, as many of these drivers will be racing at this level for the very first time. James Roberts won't, he's on pole position. Welcome back to the front. Cameron Nelson is alongside him. Tyler O'Neill and Jaden Sherwood have a little experience in this category. Dan Minto does too, alongside Hugh Roach. Oliver Warner and Kyle McLean are on the fourth row, with Christian Stepanov alongside the talented Katie Donaldson for the Ambition Motorsport team. On the sixth row of the starting grid is JJ Lowe alongside George Speechley, then Kevin Gilbasa and Jack Baker, Adam Turacek, Olivia Reynolds, Jack Freeman and Jake Rufferty. This is a fascinating class, this one. They all have the same chassis and they also have pooled engines. You are given the engine choice out of a draw. Whichever one you select is the engine you run for the entirety of the weekend. And each weekend, you get a fresh draw. You do it all over again. So it comes down to how you deal with the equipment that you're given. Everyone has the same chassis and pooled engines, so it really does come down to driver skill. Along the tram lines. Oh, well, it looks to me as though we're going to go for a false start. Yes, indeed. So uh, the green flag with the yellow chevron has come out. That indicates that we are going around for an additional formation lap. You see the drivers gesturing to each other. We're not racing. We're going round again. It's the uh, circular gesture of the finger in the air. They're going to go round for another formation lap because the grid was not quite correctly formed. Yeah, you sometimes see drivers getting a bit cheeky doing that after the start <laughs> yes, just to slow do. everybody down behind them and uh, suggest there's been uh, a false start when actually they are racing. But in this case, uh, it is a false start. Let's have another look at the grid again, Jake. Yes, indeed. So Robertson, Nelson, O'Neill and Sherwood, Minto and Roach, Warner and McLean and Stepanov and Donaldson. 
followed by the remaining eight drivers in the field. What's also interesting, of course, with the uh, false start procedure is it gives the drivers a realisation, OK, we didn't quite get that right, so let's form up a little bit earlier, which you can see for yourselves that they are. And this is obviously going to be a little bit more frequent perhaps in the Micromax than it would be in the other categories because they're still really young. They're still trying to get to learn the starting procedure. So they'll go, right, OK, I just jumped the gun a little bit there. So we'll form it up a little earlier, back the pack up. And you can see that that is a much cleaner pair of rows so they can come out of the final turn along the tram lines. And I think this time we'll go for a green flag start. There's still a few drivers out of position, but we're going to go green anyway. Jaden Sherwood is going for it into turn one as he follows in behind the 44 cart of Cameron Nelson. Nelson has ended up losing a couple of positions. James Roberts comes towards us on the two cart, the all black machine, and he's gonna go wheel to wheel with Tyler O'Neill, who has made a terrific launch up the grid. And now the rest of the field tucks away. That is Sherwood trying to get through on Cameron Nelson to battle for third position. Will he make the move up the inside? Very neat and tidy. That was well planted there on the inside by Sherwood, but on the exit, that is going to be retaliation from Cameron Nelson. You're not going to have any easy overtakes today, mate. Cameron Nelson holds on to it. That's Roberts leading with Tyler O'Neill. We know Tyler from Bambino Racing a few years ago, Jake. He was top quality performer in that. He's been uh, in Micromax for about a year now, learning the craft. And you can see how well he's learned it. He's, he's behind James Roberts. We know James who was second in the championship last year to Rory Armstrong who's in Minimax now this year, uh, although I'm saying that you won't see him in this program because he didn't make the Minimax final. No, indeed. Uh, but uh, yeah, James Roberts second last year. He'll be hoping to go one better. That's Cameron Nelson picked out running P3 and right in behind him is Jaden Sherwood, our man with the 360 degree onboard camera. I do want to pick up the driver that's moved up to fifth position off the start though, Katie Donaldson. She has shot through the field. She was started in P10 and there she is in fifth position. What a launch from Katie Donaldson. That's one to watch out for in 2022. If she can make moves like that off the start, then I have a feeling that we're going to see an awful lot of Katie Donaldson. There she is coming towards us. She's making waves out there. She's in clean air as well, Jake, so she can concentrate on trying to catch the two in front. Whether she will do or not remains to be seen. Well, Back on board here with Jaden Sherwood. Yeah, another new female talent then to uh, follow in the footsteps of the likes of Jessica Hawkins and Abby Pulling, who have come through the karting ranks in recent years. But now James Roberts and Tyler O'Neill have stretched away from Nelson and Sherwood. There's Donaldson doing a fine job in P5. Looks like uh, Hugh Roach has managed to get ahead of Dan Minto and Christian Stepanov. Minto was mighty in the heats earlier. Oh, a little bit too close together, these two. And I tell you what, JJ Lowe and George Speechley, they got away with that. As up the inside into third, that is uh, the move on from... Now, who is that getting through? Is that Stepanov on Minto? I think that was. Christian Stepanov manages to get his move on the inside there of Dan Minto for the Hunter Motorsport team. And then Carl McLean and Jack Baker are trying to line up the same move, but Minto's having to think about it into the boot once again. The light spattering of rain that uh, got us on the end of the senior Rotax uh, heat has completely dissipated once again. Now Sherwood's taken himself a little bit of time here to get back on terms with Cameron Nelson. He's actually pulled back a few cart lengths to have another run at him. Now Nelson is trying to gesture to Sherwood, look, don't race me, don't overtake me, stay behind me, let's get after the leading two. How cooperative is Sherwood going to be? Well, that depends on how well he feels he can catch up. There's some degree of sense in that, of course, because they are losing time against the two leaders, and it's the two leaders, they want to be in that battle to win the race, but I think, to be frank, Roberts and O'Neill just got too much of an advantage here. Good defence from Dan Minto. He could very easily have let Carl McLean go there on the inside of Wilkins, but he doesn't. He holds on to his line. And that was well covered by Dan Minto, who really is putting on an excellent show so far this weekend. It was mighty in uh, the earlier phase of the weekend. It's always difficult once you get to the uh, final. Once you're in uh, a rock and a hard place, you've got a lot of work to do to try and fight back. Here we go. Look at O'Neill. He's going to make his bid. A long fi uh, fine lady in Manuel's bank into Christmas, and he takes the lead. Good run from Tyler O'Neill. He planned that quite a long way back, and there's not a lot that James Roberts can do in retaliation just yet. And look at Tyler O'Neill. He's actually held his nerve into Ashby. He's pulled about a cart length and a half in terms of daylight. And if James Roberts is not careful, Tyler O'Neill will disappear rapidly. Now, James Roberts will know he can now have a look at him and uh, he'll he'll probably spend a couple of laps here. He can afford to spend a couple of laps, plenty of time to go. Only four laps in, basically, so he's got plenty of time to have a look at the man out front. He 
you can see he's clearly got the same sort of pace and uh, he can pick his moment to go past, but no. uh, he may get frustrated if he can't get past. Now Sherwood's trying to do exactly the same thing Tyler O'Neill just did. He come from a long way back and creep up behind Cameron Nelson unawares. And as they come up to Christmas on lap six, it's going to be a fascinating run for the drivers again. Sherwood just can't quite find that gap on the inside of Cameron Nelson. But O'Neill and Roberts still having a great duel as they run out of Ashby's. They take that wide line a little further back. This is Nelson and Sherwood for third. Still taking it nice and easy. Now, Katie Donaldson is being caught, by the way, by Hugh Roach. So it is two by two hurrah at the moment. It's O'Neill and Roberts for the lead. It's Nelson and Sherwood for third. And it's Donaldson and Roach for fifth. Yeah, I would say, Jake, you being a religious person, you know about the uh, the Noah's Ark and all that. We'd have, uh, if it was Noah's Ark today, we'd have giraffes, elephants, tigers, and two Sony Car Academy drivers. Absolutely. It's literally two by two by two. We've even had the rain to throw into the mix as well to uh, continue the pun, so it's all gone well. Six drivers, three pairs, and all of them want to come out on top of their battle. Cameron Nelson versus Jaden Sherwood as we continue racing here at the Formula Fans Ultimate Karting Championship in the Sony Kart UKC Academy Super Final. And this is the race for third position. What is Jaden Sherwood going to do to put one over on Cameron Nelson? And further back, you've got Katie Donaldson desperately trying to hang on in front of Hugh Roach, who has absolutely stormed in behind her. And now there are going to be three separate battles for first, third, and fifth. And further back, here it is, Donaldson desperately trying to hang on here. This is not going to be easy to hang on to. Hugh Roach is really starting to cover his bases now. Stefanov P7, then Minto, Reynolds, McLean, Warner and Baker. Turacek, and then we've got Low Speechley and Freeman. Oh, that is a problem for Jake Grufferty. Jake Grufferty is having a little bit of a hard time there, and it looks to me as though his race may be coming to a premature end. Meanwhile, Battle is still raging between Nelson and Sherwood. Nelson and Sherwood still very close to each other. And it's tough to know who is going to get the third place here. They have lost the toe of O'Neill and Roberts, who are still absolutely bumper to bumper at the moment. Sherwood trying his best. See, he's just playing the long game here. He, he probably realizes at this point, I'm not really in the race for the victory here. I'm in the race for third position, but if I just hustle Nelson, I can have uh, a little bit of uh, breathing space to play with. Yeah, but as we've said before, Jake, you want to be third in this situation because if the two leaders tangle and take each other off, if you're third, suddenly you're the race leader. So Sherwood will want to get into third place as quickly as he can, if he can. And it is going to be very tough to know whether he can do that. Tyler O'Neill out in front of James Roberts. Look at the gap back, because there's Nelson and Sherwood. Sherwood thinking about it as they go into Christmas once again. They come off the left-hand flick and up towards Inkermans. One of the toughest race circuits in Britain, Wilton Mill, especially in these greasy conditions. Formula One sensation Lando Norris regularly comes back and has a play here because it is such a technical challenge as a racetrack. You'll often see George Russell popping in through the gates as well. They really do love this place and uh, they grew up in classes very similar to this one. Uh, where you learn how you get to be a world-class racing driver. Is Jaden Sherwood going to get his opportunity on Cameron Nelson on lap 11? Come off the final turn. O'Neill and Roberts still very close to each other. But it looks to me as though James Roberts is just ticking down laps here. He's not really going for Tyler O'Neill yet. He knows he just needs to stay close enough to him to be a threat. But essentially, Tyler O'Neill is cutting through the air first. And that means that he's pushing his tyres, his engine, his brakes a little bit harder than James Roberts is. So James is playing very smart here. Yeah, I think James will want to get past in the next lap or two. I say lap or two. I think in this next lap, yeah, he I ideally right. needs to get track position here. Yeah. And uh, who knows? Has he got the pace? I think he might have gone by if he had the pace. I'm not sure he has. They're quite comparable, aren't they? If you look at their sector times, they are very evenly matched, as are these two. Sherwood is right in behind Nelson, but there are parts of the course where Nelson is actually able to pull a little bit more time away from Sherwood. But Roche is in front of Katie Donaldson, by the way, Jake. Yes, indeed, yes. So Roche did get through into fifth position. There is the battle for third position. Still Nelson versus Sherwood, but as you picked up, Hugh Roach has, out of the shot of the cameras, made his way into fifth position ahead of Katie Donaldson, but there's still a little bit of time left for her to get back into the top five. 
How about this? Tyler O'Neill, look, he is actually giving himself a little bit of daylight between himself and James Roberts. It's like he's waited till this moment to suddenly go, right, well, I've got a little bit more pace in the car, actually, so I'm going to start to stretch away. Meanwhile, Sherwood is really going to try and make his move. He's got the onboard 360-degree camera. The car travels a little bit on the apex there through the ankle and the heel of the boot. And if they come on the final turn, they really had to stick to the road itself rather than hop over the curbs uh, these days because that curb at the final corner at Wilton Mill has been elevated for this season and they really do stay off it these days. Now the battle for third is intensifying because we've got two laps to go. So this is where the drivers are really going to be starting to take chances. Roberts will want to go for O'Neill and Sherwood will want to go for Nelson. Now the problem is with two laps remaining, if you're in front of these two by two by two battles, you are now defending because you know the person right behind you is trying to come past. So now it becomes even more difficult than it was before. This is really good movements from Nelson, but Sherwood's going to get a better run off of Ozias and into the boot. That is textbook from Jaden Sherwood. Lines it up, perfectly timed, and there's not going to be a lot of opportunities now for Cameron Nelson to snatch it back from him. There's battles on the final lap of the race coming up by the look of it. And you can see this gaggle of carts in the middle of the field. You've got McLean, Warner, Reynolds, Baker, Lowe, Freeman. They're all going to try and pick up a place or two in the final lap. But this man, Tyler O'Neill, has bit the bullet and put his foot down at exactly the right moment. And try as he might, Roberts just can't overhaul him. Nice lap. And uh, I think Roberts has run out of time here. It's going to be a super lunge if he's going to take it. I think he may decide that, you know what, Second place, good points on the weekend. I don't think he's going to be able to do oh, much I, from I here. I don't know, though. He's managing to get a little bit closer as they come up to the toe of the boot. He is going to go for the inside. Ah, oh, they come together. And O'Neill spins. Roberts is going to take the victory on the road. But I have a feeling that Alan Bryant will have seen that. The checkered flag comes out. No celebration. No. no celebration for James Roberts. Well, for Sherwood there is. He's delighted. He loves third place. He knows he's got third place. But James Roberts did not celebrate as he went Robbins. across the line. And I think that is because he will know that when you're the man doing the overtaking now, interestingly, Jake, should Tyler O'Neill see him? I think he should. Should he give him room? Yes, but he doesn't. No. And that is what you're risking when you don't. But, Unfortunately, but they're racing drivers. They do not exactly. want to give up a win. Well, Tyler O'Neill does cross the line 4.1 seconds behind James Roberts, but after a five-second penalty was handed to Roberts post-race, the order is redressed. Tyler O'Neill does take the win then from James Roberts, Jaden Sherwood and Cameron Nelson. Katie Donaldson is awarded fifth place ahead of Christian Stefanov after a five-second front fairing goes the way of Hugh Roach. Then Kevin Kielbasa, Dan Minto and JJ Lowe round out the top ten. It's going to be a brilliant year in the Sony Kart UKC Academy in 2022. Micromax this year is definitely going to be ultra competitive and O'Neill and Roberts could be brilliant. Well, excitement from those Micromax Sodi Academy drivers there. The two youngsters were out in front for the whole of it, but in the finish, James Roberts seemed to do a little move there on Tyler O'Neill that maybe the stewards will take a look at. Let's find out what happened when we caught up with them all at the podium. What do you like about the class so much? It's really equal considering everyone's on the same chassis, it's pulled engines and they're all dyno to be exactly the same. So it, it causes for some really good racing. Yeah, just talk us through that final from your point of view. It, it was a really good final, to be honest. The two leaders got away, they was pushing, us pushing Cameron Nelson. And on the second to last lap, I sent a move going into the boot and managed to bring it home in third. OK, who do you want to thank for your weekend? Hydrate mate, Harwood and my family. James, it all started for you at Woomwell last year, of course, as uh, I know quite well. Um, great result for you. You went across the line in first. Obviously, you got that penalty for a little bit of contact going through the boot. But um, I guess you'd accept that, would you? Yeah, I think it was just like it was fair in the end. With the, I obviously went for the move because I thought there's a gap there, but it's a fair decision in the end to give me. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there was a time when Alan Bryant, um, he's, I think he's turned into an old softy. I think he'd have given you a 10-second penalty for that at one point, but he got away with it, finished second anyway. What were you hoping for coming into the weekend? I spoke to Jake Sanson earlier in the weekend, and I had you down as my championship favourite for the season. I'm still going to go with that. It's a good start to the championship season. What were you hoping for coming in this weekend, though? I always hope for a P1, obviously, but top three always, like, Top three for this weekend. Okay, who do you want to thank? 
uh, like thank my dad on the spanners and my mum back home from lo loads of the support from back home and Tony and Alex for help. OK, well done. Thank you. Tyler, I know you as a serial front-runner in the Bambino class, of course. You've been in Micromax, started last year, um, done a little bit in the class. But what a great start to 2022 for you. Just talk us through that super final. Well, at the start, it was rough because um, I had to stay behind him and I couldn't really overtake him. But when I got him, I made a gap sometimes, but then he came up to us and it was a hard, it was a hard drive. Yeah, a little bit of contact in yeah. the boot there. He went across the line first. Clark, of course, has given him one place penalty. I think that's fair. You think that's fair? Yeah, it was a bit unlucky for him, though. I think he probably thought that was probably a gap and then he tried to go for it, but then his hair's off. OK. Who do you want to thank for your weekend? Um, my mum, my dad, ST Racing, Saudi, and my sister. OK, well done. Thank you. Micromax is definitely going to be competitive in 2022. James Roberts has the point swing ahead of Tyler O'Neill, thanks to his performance over the weekend. Cameron Nelson is four points behind O'Neill. Hugh Roach is just one ahead of Dan Minto. With Oliver Warner, Jaden Sherwood, Katie Donaldson, Christian Stefanov and Kyle McLean scoring well, it's very unclear, even at this early stage, if James Roberts is going to be able to run away with it. The experts seem to think it won't be that easy. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for in this programme. But do join us next time when we'll be bringing you all of the action from this, the opening round of the Ultimate Karting Championship.